everybody, it's Eugene and welcome to another video. Today what I'm going to be showing you is how to convert a Recon 3D point cloud to a mesh using Analyzer Pro. Now Analyzer Pro is a software program that is used for people doing collision reconstruction or investigations. And uh, just let me show you quickly here at the home page. This is where it is if you're interested, analyzer.at. Now the reason I'm showing this video is because of a conversation that I had with Matthias Schmidt and he's one of the developers and founders of Analyzer Pro. And you know when you have a problem and somebody has a solution, well that's exactly what happened. And so I've been looking for ways to convert or simple ways to convert Recon 3D E57 files, which is a point cloud format into a mesh format. And there's different programs and things that you can use, but there's a very simple solution inside of Analyzer Pro. And so uh, I thought I would show you that today. So uh, we're going to get right to it here. I'm inside of the software and there are two ways to handle point cloud imports. One is where you're going to be importing something like a vehicle where, you know, it's going to be moving around. It's a movable object. And so you're going to use it to, uh, let's say, overlay onto another rig of a vehicle and then you can drive it along and do some different things. And the other one is a static object. So if you're just importing a terrain or a landscape, a photogrammetry model from drones of a roadway, whatever it might be, then you can do that too. Now, both of the models that I'm going to be using today are from Recon 3D. So we're going to start with the static model. And I want to preface this video with a very simple statement. And that is that I am no expert in Analyzer Pro by any means. So I know how to do these couple of things here, but this program has a lot of other features that are interesting to other people. But um, let's, let me show you how this works. So the first thing you do is when you open up Analyzer Pro, You'll see there's a lot of uh, icons and things here, but we're just going to go to graphics right over here. We're going to go down to photogrammetry and laser scan, and you'll see the two options that I talked about. So the first one is vehicle, and then there's a landscape static object. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to open that up. And what I have is a laser scan that I did with Recon 3D. And let me bring that up here. Let me see if I've got it available. Here it is. It's under ramp. So let me open this up in cloud compare just so you get a quick look at what it is. Okay, there you go. It's just a ramp, uh, simple ramp, nothing special. Okay, this is a, a quick scan that I did up and down here. And if I click on it, uh, in terms of points, this has, uh, looks like 70, uh, excuse me, 24 million points. So, you know, it's a decent size point cloud, let's say. Back to Analyzer Pro. And what we need to do is we need to import the point cloud. And I do that just by clicking on this little button here and I'm already there. So this is the E57 file. I'm just going to double click it. And what it's going to do is just going to import the um, point cloud, but it's already converting it to a mesh. Okay. So uh, it takes a little bit. This is a pretty decent sized point cloud, not too, too big, but still 24 million points is uh, nothing to laugh at but it does a pretty good job. And what it's going to do is it's going to write an OBJ uh, model to the same folder where the E57 file was located. So, okay, that just came up right now. You'll see it right there. And there you go. Now, there were some gaps here uh, in the point cloud data because um, when I was walking up and down, I was really focused on the road and there's sort of this extraneous stuff that was um, picked up. So I wasn't, wasn't really focused on the grass or um, anything outside of the roadway, but no big deal. We've got that anyway. And you'll see how this is oriented in the uh, grid here. So there's some things you can do here. You know, you can scale it, you can um, orient it differently or whatever. I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm just going to live with what I've got. But I will show you, I'm going to go back to the folder. It's already got an OBJ file. I've got the material file and I've got the uh, texture file, which is in PNG format. So these three, um, these three files here now stick together. Okay. So if you're going to open this up in a different program, well, you need to, uh, you need to have these three files there. And just so you uh, realize that this is an actual file that we can mess around with, uh, I'm going to import this into Blender just so you can see. So let me go ahead and go Blender. Let me go to the OBJ and I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm going to go to the ramp. There it is. And I'm looking for the OBJ file. Now I have to be careful here. Uh, often this will default to Y up. And so this specifies which axis is going up. So in our case, the Z is up. But um, when I had done this before, the Y was up. So now it's Z up. I'm just going to go ahead and 
import this just to give you um, a look at what this looks like right out of Analyzer Pro. Now let me see what happens here. So there it is. Um, now you'll notice that it's kind of floating above the surface. Okay, so it's a little bit high there. Uh, well, not too bad. It's kind of touching, but it, it is offset. So one important thing with these point clouds when you import them is you can set them up so that you know this mesh object or this um, the original scan file, the E57 file, is at some known location. So the zero, zero, zero point is at some location, but I didn't do it in this one. It doesn't matter, but there you go. Okay. That's the, that's the uh, textured mesh right out of, right out of Analyzer Pro. Good. Okay. Back to Analyzer Pro. So we're here now and it's looking pretty good there. Now, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to export this. Okay. So right now it's converted it to a mesh, but we need to export this so that we can use it inside of Analyzer Pro. So I'm going back to the ramp and you'll see that it's got uh, its own format here. So I'm just going to call this ramp as well. And I'm going to click on save. Okay. So now this is going to take a little while and there's some additional things that Analyzer Pro is going to be doing to this. So one thing is that it's going to create a 2D model of the terrain. So an orthographic projection of the 3D model. So when you look at it in a top down view, just like this, you'll see it just popped up. It didn't take very long. Okay. You can overlay cars and things like that with it. So no problem. The second thing that it does is it creates a kind of height uh, map. And the height map is where if you were to put like a vehicle on top of it, it's almost like a collision object. It, it detects where the ground is. And so if there is an elevation, it will ride up the elevation and it just won't ride through the point cloud. So for example, if I go to 3D right now and let me maximize this. Oh, let me go back here. There we go. There you go. You'll see that I've got the 3D model, right? And all is good. Uh, now, if I want to um, bring in a vehicle or something like that, I think I can specify a vehicle here. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. I want to bring in a vehicle. No, I got to do something else. Let me go to the database and see what I can do here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in a vehicle. So there is a database here. There we go. So let me click on that. And uh, you can specify the vehicle, but I'm going to go to the database and I don't know, I'm going to have to bring something in a BMW and we're going to uh, bring something in here. Now there are um, a number of different models here, just like that. So these highlighted ones are where there are existing 3D models. So for example, if I wanted like a, a wagon or something like that, I could go ahead and go load. Okay, great. I've got that there. I'm going to go okay. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I believe if I go up here, I can specify the time. So let's say for four seconds, this vehicle is uh, going to be moving at, uh, I don't know, let's say 40 kilometers per hour. And I'm going to go calculate and let's see what happens here. Did I make this work or no? Maybe not. Uh, let me go back and see if I can figure this out. This is the 3D. Oh, I did. There you go. The model is there. See, I know what I'm doing kind of. Now let me hit play here. Okay. So that was cool. As you see right at the beginning, how it actually took stepped up on the terrain here. So let me do that again. That looks kind of funny. Let me re rewind. And now you'll see it started here and it's right over the edge. Okay. So that's obviously uh, a problem there, but you get the idea. You can see that it's actually following the terrain. So cool. That worked and I'm real happy. Now what we're going to do is we'll close this project and we're going to start fresh and we will do the uh, movable object like a vehicle. Okay, we are back in Analyzer Pro and now what we're going to do is we're going to import a vehicle and set up that vehicle so that you can actually drive it along. Let's give this a go here. So we're going to go to the same place we went to before, which is up at graphics. Then we're going to go down to photogrammetry and laser scan. And now we're going to create vehicle movable objects. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now we get this window. It's a little bit different than what we had before. And I'm going to be loading up a scan of a BMW. So let me just bring that up here just to give you an idea what that looks like. And I'll fire that up inside a cloud compare. Okay. Nothing too crazy. This is a vehicle, a test vehicle. And you can see, there you go. It's pretty complete uh, in terms of the file size. It's uh, or point file size. It's about 3.2 million points. Okay. So good enough there. Let's go back to Analyzer Pro. And we're just going to import that specific file. So let me go in. Let me go to the BMW. This is the E57 file. 
And now we're going to bring it in and see what happens. Now, this particular file, I actually did center a little bit better. So the orientation should work out and it kind of falls more or less um, where it needs to be. Okay, but there's going to need to be some setup here. So you'll see how it lands inside of this um, little box. And these are sort of like the specific dimensions. So um, there's a couple of things we can do here. We can actually cut out the wheels and so that, you know, Analyzer Pro, when we put it onto a new vehicle, it'll put the other vehicles back on. And to do that, I'm going to click on show cylinder and you'll see that I've got this here and we need to specify the wheelbase and stuff. Um, now I wrote down some things before just so that I didn't mess things up and I'm going to type in those numbers here and you'll see that the box will start adjusting here. And so will everything else. So let me go ahead and put in those numbers really quickly. Uh, this is going to be about 240. And what I found is I just got to play with this in order to get it to work, uh, depending on the vehicle and stuff like that. Oops, that's wrong. I need to get the right number in there. There we go. And then the wheelbase, I had about 3,000. Okay, and then the radius. So the radius uh, specifies the radius over here. So basically trying to match the uh, the tires or the wheel well. So I had about 330. Okay, and let me just make sure I think. Uh, okay, that's uh, we might want to adjust this a little bit. I don't like this part here. Back here, it's okay. Let me just check the other side. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit further back, so I may want to make some tweaks here by moving it a little bit further forward. Let me try 5,000. Okay, that moved a little bit further forward. Okay, you get the idea. You can sit there and you can tweak a little bit here and there. Okay, I'm just going to keep what I've got, and over here where it says cut, I'm going to go ahead and cut, and you'll see that it's, you know, obviously cut out part of the wheel wheel. i got a little bit of the tire here, whatever, but uh, let's pretend it's a mud flap or something like that. Uh, in terms of the overall dimensions, you'll see that the uh, this uh, rectangular prism matches pretty well, and I think I'm gonna live with this. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go ahead and go export. So this is where we get the uh, the native format inside of Analyzer Pro, and I'm just gonna call this uh, BMW five like that and I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Okay, so now what it's done is it's written that out uh, into the file. So what I want to do is I now want to take that model and I want to apply it to something that is in the, the vehicle database. So let's get started with that. So in order to do that, I think I need to click on the database right here and I need to specify a model or something like that. So I'm going to go to the database first and this was a BMW and I guess I should have checked that we had a model for it first, but I believe I do. That's a pretty popular car. So this is the five. Uh, maybe did I miss it already? Oh, on the seven, six, do I got a five? Five, five, or did I skip the five? There's four. Well, I got some five. Uh, well, not exactly. Uh, you know what? Let's try this. Let's try the S series and see if we get something close. I'm going to go ahead and go load. Okay, so we got this vehicle here. It may not be exact and I may have to try and find the exact model. But what I'm going to do right now with these here is I'm going to load the 3D model that we just exported to apply to this um, vehicle here. So I'm going to go 3D model and we're going to go back to the uh, desktop and find that BMW. And there we are. So this is the one that we just exported. I'm going to click on that. And that should have applied everything to it. So I believe if I click on OK, all right, and now let's see if we can do something by giving it a time and distance and something like that. So let me go ahead and go time. Let's say it goes for five seconds and it starts at about, I don't know, 70 kilometers an hour. I'm going to calculate. All right, there we go. I've got something here. And OK, if I hit play. All right. Now, I think I, I'm not sure if I've got this playing the right way or if it's backwards. Let's see what happens when I go to 3D. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. Oh, it's under here. Sorry. Just managing my windows here. Uh, looks like it's moving the right way. Uh, yeah, looks like it is actually. So let me go back. Let me zoom out a bit. And there it is. The vehicle is there. And let me hit play. Now I can see it's squished it a bit. So I had to play with some of the, uh, the model here. It's obviously not the exact same, uh, model that I had before. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool, I think, for what we got. So one thing 
I didn't show you was actually the OBJ model. And uh, let me go back. So yes, I got an OBJ model here. I've got the material file and I've got the texture file, the image here. And if I go into Blender and I want to import that just to show you that it all works. And I'm going to go to the OBJ. This is the OBJ file for what we just had. And let me see here, make sure that I center it properly. And there you go. So we've got the, the model that's already there, which is great. So, you know, this is something that you can use in other programs. You can do other things with it. And I think it's great. A uh, really, really simple way inside of Analyzer Pro just to get OBJ models if you're going to use them for something else. So it's a fantastic byproduct. It works really well. I like the way that the models come out and uh, seems to work and be compatible in things like MeshLab, Cloud Compare, and I've used it in other programs as well, like 3D Studio Max, Blender, and so forth. Hope you like this video, Analyzer Pro. You can check them out. Uh, again, if you just want to go to their website, it's analyzer.at. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video, folks. Bye-bye.